Hello and welcome to the Unit 3 podcast on section 9.3. Today we're going to be talking about structures of molecules. And so here we go. I'm Mr. Lin. And I'm still Mr. Sakaguchi. So let's start. Structural formulas are basically Lewis structures connected together to show um, a little bit more information about our molecules. So they show who's connected to who and what kind of bonds actually hold them together. So we start our Lewis structures with just dots for the valence electrons. Now we're going to start connecting the dots. And there are a few different kinds of structural formulas to be aware of that you'll see in the book. Um, so if you look at the figure here on the right, we have molecular formulas which are just the composition. Structural formulas are two-dimensional flat pictures that kind of show the bonds. Ball and stick models show us kind of more of a three-dimensional shape. Where space fielding kind of gives us the most realistic view of how the molecule most likely looks. So the question is, well, how do I know how to put these structures together? How do I know what to connect to who and all that other stuff? Yeah. So this is kind of long, but this is something that we're gonna we're gonna work on together. And it seems kind of weird at first, but as you do a few, which we'll do in class, it'll make a lot more sense. Right. So first up is to predict. Um, where the atoms are in relationship to each other. And the, the, the first one you're going to want to pick out is a central atom, and that's going to be whatever... Well, we'll talk about that in a minute, so okay. just go through the list. All right, so we'll start off with find total number of electrons available for bonding, your valence electrons, and you take that number, you divide it by two, and that'll tell you how many bonding pairs or how many bonds are going to be formed. Well, yeah. So they could be bonding pairs or they could be lone pairs as well. Uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to connect everything to the central atom with single bonds at first. Then what we do is we figure out after we do that how many pairs of electrons are left. Those are, those are potentially double or triple bonds or they could be lone pairs. Now a lone pair are electrons that complete octets but are not part of the covalent bonds. Right, they're not actually in the bond but they help individual atoms fill out their uh, their full eight for the octet. So what we do next is we take the lone pairs and we basically complete the octets for atoms that are connected to the central atom, which we call the terminal atoms. If there are any pairs of electrons left after the fact, then they go to the central atom. If the central atom is not surrounded by four pairs, if it doesn't have its octet, then you have to take some of those lone pairs from the terminal atoms to make a double or triple bond to make sure that the central atom has its octet as well. Right. So little hints. Uh, hydrogen is always terminal. It is never the central atom. I never want to see H in the middle. It can't possibly form anything else. Central atoms typically are going to be the atom with the fewest valence electrons, not counting hydrogen. Okay. Um, usually, the way formulas are written, they kind of give away the central atom because usually the central atom is written in the middle of the formula. Um, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur are the ones that will normally go in the middle sometimes. And these are the only ones that have the ability to form a double or a triple bond. Right. Uh, polyatomic ions, basically... We're going to use the same method as for binary compounds, but the electron tally is a little bit different. For positive ions, whatever the charge is, is what sub we subtract from the central atom. Excuse me. So if we have um, ammonium, which has a plus one charge, because of the plus one charge, we take one electron away from the central atom. In this case, would be nitrogen. So nitrogen would have four, but not five uh, because of the charge. And if it's a negative ion, what you're going to wind up doing is add electrons to the central atom. Okay, so in the example here with PO, PO4, 3 minus, um, phosphorus is going to add on eight electrons to your structure, not just five. Because of the three minus charge. Right, because of your negative three charge. The other thing we do for polyatomic ion structures is we encase it in square brackets and we put the net charge on the outside. So that way we know it's, a, it's an ion and not a molecule. Because right. remember, molecules don't have a charge. Uh, some uh, other things related to our structural formulas. Sometimes you'll have situations where more than one um, formula is possible for a Lewis structure. So, for instance, here on the bottom, 
there is one double bond connecting the carbon to the three oxygens. And there's no real reason why it can't be this first oxygen or one of the ones on the side. When this happens, uh, and, and these other structures are other examples of, of possible possible Lewis structures that would give you more than one uh, diagram. What ends up happening is the the molecule actually will oscillate or flicker back and forth between all of the possible structures if there's no energetic difference. And since these electrons are moving at near the speed of light, it effectively is doing a double, almost a full double bond, but with all three possibilities at the same time. So what ends up happening is we end up dividing and averaging the, the actual bond itself. So it's never really a true double bond. It's actually a bond and, and a little bit more than that because of the resonant or flickering nature of these kinds of structures. Um, there are some exceptions to the octet rule to be aware of as well. There's always exceptions in chemistry. There are some molecules that have odd numbers of valence electrons and don't form octets. Again, I'm not going to test you on these, so these are just things to be aware of. Right, so don't flip out if you run into them. Um, there are some molecules that have less than an octet. Boron is just one that often does this. Beryllium is another one that does this. And then there's something called an expanded octet, where your central atom winds up having more than just eight uh, valence electrons at, or eight valence electrons for its uh, final configuration. So we're talking about nonmetals in period three or below that can do this. Right. Um, going back to, to point two is we also have a, a situation where we will have coordinate covalent bonds and this is a situation where one atom donates both electrons to form a covalent bond. In the covalent bonds that we've been talking about up to this point um, each element tends to donate an electron. Each one ponies up one to share. With coordinate bonds, one donates both, the other one just mooches off the other one. So that is something that does happen, especially with the, some of the polyatomic ions. All right. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, okay.